Hi everybody, I have been joined by Benny and Alan from Playfusion, creators of Lightseekers. So, uh, first things first, this is a trading card game. I know, gasp, I'm doing a video on a trading card game. I, I've always said I'm not a fan, but these guys have actually won me over because this is a very bright, light, fun game that I don't feel like I'm going to end up on the street selling my body. Has that, is, has that happened before? <laughs> there are some games out there that you know you can get very, very deeply into. <laughs> I, I, I have some pe seen some people who are just like, mm, yeah, yeah, I don't need to eat this month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen a few people like that come into our uh, events, oh, buying no, up really? ridiculous amounts of booster packs. And uh, This is the thing. The, the trading card games have one really great thing, which is that, that feel-good moment of opening up, yeah. and you're looking through, and it's just like, shiny. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, again, we're in Ireland. I'll take the shiny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys are with Playfusion, so it's not just Light Seekers, the card game you guys are working on. So I actually wanted to get a sit down with you and talk about all of the stuff yep. that you guys are currently working on. So, uh, what's the latest and greatest, eh? Benny, do you want to answer uh, this? Yeah, so I can't really mention everything just yet, but. Uh, Shh, secret things. Yeah, yeah so. Stay mo tuned. Yeah. So most of us come from a background of uh, uh, a variety of video games, MMO design. Um, digital card games, mm -hmm. uh, console games, etc. So a rich background of all types of gamers, role playing, yes. tabletop, etc. Uh, at PlayFusion, we are we've got the Lightseekers brand, uh, mm -hmm. which is our main focus yes. at the moment, at least. Uh, well, well, to come as well, but more things on the horizon, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got a there's a digital RPG, mm -hmm. uh, which is the same IP, and obviously the physical card game. The two interconnect, so all the cards you have here, you can scan into the digital game as well for a variety of bonuses and so on. Uh, trash the place. I'm gonna <laughs> just knock that over. Uh, and uh, we are working on a digital version of the game as well, mm -hmm. and all the physical cards, as we'll see in, in a bit, uh, can be scanned into the digital game as well. So when you do play the card game digitally, yeah. everything you own physically has not gone to waste. Mm -hmm. They will give you all those cards digitally and in addition to other bonuses. So you can build that really good physical deck, try it out online against people before you take it to a tournament and uh, see how it gets on there. Yeah, You see, th this is something I've always found. I enjoy having physical aspects yep. to play with. I mean, like, whenever it comes to, like, a good fantasy novel, mm -hmm. I would rather have an old battered copy of a book in my hands. Yep. But with this, actually having the cards and being able to scan them in, yep. you can have that experience of laying your entire collection out, seeing yep. it, lording over it, and going, OK, I want this, 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 and then scanning it all in, and then taking it online to test against your friends. It takes away a problem that I've seen in a lot of gaming mm -hmm. that's physical gaming, is being the man on the last mile or the woman on the last mile, where you don't have people to play against, so your collection yeah. just sits there and gathers dust. Being able to actually transfer it to a digital format is very cool, because then you can get on and actually start practicing, and then you can actually go to an event feeling like you know, you're ready for yeah, this. Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's what we've had people say. People have been coming along to the events and they've mm -hmm. said, oh, it's been, you know, we can't wait to be able to do that aspect of it because mm -hmm. I love coming along here and playing it, but because it's a new game, it's like, I don't know how many people I'm going to find around. Though we have actually been finding a, a really big pickup in hobby shops, like the amount of places where, that have been ringing up to get more orders of stock yeah. in. So we know it's getting out there now and it's yeah, we got to... Yeah, we've got quite a few good places in uh, both the UK and America uh, where, yeah, it's picking up a uh, good scenes are spreading. We have a really active scene in in Scotland, yep. uh, and uh, scattered around the UK, and it's just growing. So it's going really well. Yeah, I honestly, having having sat down and played a few games of it now, I I fully expect this to be a a long standing trading card game. I love the aspect that it's also got the toys with it. So yeah, you actually do like action figures of some yes, of the heroes, yep. which is yep. such a cool thing because I mean, like I saw it myself, right? I went to Gen Con last year with Don and Gianna, and we were walking around, and just from the left of me, I hear this little, this little, out <gasps> of Don, because she, <laughs> she had seen the toys, and she looked at it and went, man, my little nephew, your niece, is going to love that. Yeah. And she, she actually went up, she got the, the two wave ones. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember Jackson the Cora. Jackson Cora, yeah. Yep. Yep. She picked up both of those, so I believe Jack's for her little nephew and Cora for herself. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, this is something I can have fun with my with my niece, nephew, whatever with. Yeah. And then having that actually, now the the action figures aren't just a plastic toy. No. They're more than that, which is what's incredible. So can you can you explain to me quickly, just so I don't mangle it and get it yeah. wrong, <laughs> as to what they actually are? Yeah. So uh, the action figures are digital action figures. They have basically a mini computer built into them. Uh, so they come with a fusion core, which you plug into the back. Uh, each action figure. It uh, comes with like 3,000 voice lines. They have lights, LEDs. Uh, they are connected for uh, weapons, shields, and so into the hands, uh, flight packs on the back. Mm. And they connect to the RPG. So uh, each character is like your save file, basically, for the game. 
uh, the items level up, and they have that save file on the physical item itself. So mm. if you give that sword to someone else, it maintains the same level that you had. Mm. The way you equipped it, the way you spec the talent trees and so on, are all saved on the character. Uh, so a very cool thing. And the thing so that people all love is the uh, well, the thing that always gets the wow moment out of people is the flight pack, isn't it? Yeah. Because so they also yeah on. they can also be used as controllers. Like you yeah. can play the game completely digitally, like mm -hmm. without these. Uh, you can connect them and play with them just linked, or you can play with them physically. So the action figure itself is a controller. You can mm -hmm. fly around the world, do various little action games and so on with. Yeah, I remember I saw you guys did a, a fantastic trail that you had up and running, and I actually showed a yeah. kid with their action figure with the screen in front of them and then turning and twisting the action yeah, figure yeah. to fly through the air. It's a really, really cool piece of innovation that, I mean, like, I, whenever I was growing up as a kid, I always wanted to actually have that where I could, I could see the epic moments, the epic things happening with the toys that I was yeah. playing with. I wasn't a very imaginative kid, I'll tell you <laughs> that. You know, I got army men, I knocked them over, and yep. yeah, that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone of a certain age remembers that movie, Small Soldiers. And oh, uh, God, that's yes. the thing that everyone talks about. Oh, this is like Small Soldiers, because yes. you're, as you're walking around the world in the game, the character starts talking about where you are. You can obviously be moving them to do that. Mm. The figures are obviously, they're not solid plastic. They are articulated, so you can yeah. move them about. And yeah. yeah, there's a lot to them, but Small Soldiers is the uh, is yeah. the reference. Again, if you're of a certain age, you, you know yeah, that movie. It, yeah. If you've never seen it, go back and watch <laughs> it. It's, is an eight, is a nineties cheese classic, isn't it? It, it is a nineties cheese classic. Yeah, yeah. Who you call it small? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, with you guys coming from the, the digital world to the tabletop world, I mean, like, I've always wondered what the sort of crossover is from the the two industries. Because I mean, like, I know me, I'm a tabletop gamer. I love playing video games. I yeah. love that that aspect of being able to actually have the imag imagination taken away from you for a little bit mm. and being shown something incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. But does that work the other way around with you guys coming from the video game industry back into the tabletop industry before you moved in? Were you big gamers in uh, the tabletop yes. side? Um, yeah. And that goes for the like previous companies and current one we work at as well. Like mm. uh, it might be because of the type of games we focus on MMOs, big RPGs, like big storytelling worlds and so on. And like everybody there was a board gamer as well. It was card games, board games. I mean I've been playing video games and board games and card games since I was like three, four years old. So Wow. It's been, it's Wait, always you were been playing around. video games at three years old? Yes, that's what the NES. I'm born in 84, so 87. We were literally talking about yeah. this just before we went live, weren't we? Yeah, before, before just yeah, like, I started, yeah <laughs> like I started making my own little, uh, I remember making my first board games and role playing games at like, uh, the first board games were like five. They were terrible games. <laughs> but I used to take my uncle's old school books, just scribble yeah. paths and uh, like yeah. markers for why like, boss fights happened and <laughs> like very simple really game really systems. Cool. So that's like since you have five or six, and it's just always been a thing I've been doing. So yeah. even though professionally it's just been, I've, until now a few years ago, it's just been video games, yeah. like role-playing games, tabletop games, card games have always been well, there. We've got a shelving unit full. Of, I mean, it's not quite up to the level of this, but we've got a shelving unit full of games um, at work that, that we've all been bringing in and loading up. Over a decade. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, in the office, it's it does every every couple of days. It does seem to increase in size. Yeah. It, I have had to take my copy of Kingdom Death Monster there <laughs> because it is the only shelf. No shelf in my house is big enough to fit that game on. Yeah. So I, it has to live in the office now. So we occasionally try to stupidly fit a game of it, of it in at lunch, which means that lunch runs long on those days, <laughs> and you can't go in the boardroom because it's the only place with a table big enough <laughs> that we can play that game. But everyone there plays games. Uh, now that that just warms my heart to actually hear people from the industry, you know, just even just randomly calling out a game that they they love playing and mm -hmm. love having fun with, like that, like Kingdom Death Monster. I absolutely love. Yeah. We'll save that for off camera. We'll go to the pub later, get a couple of pints. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we will share war stories. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, there are some brutal stories in that game. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Well, you may have seen we did. Oh, well, series, we have. So, oh, da, da, da. <laughs> anyway, so Play Fusion is sort of a. You're actually kind of a, from the sound of it, a hybrid company doing both physical and digital yeah. games. Which yeah, so. It's incredible. Yes, yeah, so I mean, some of the stuff that we had to learn in terms of the manufacturing is almost brand new to many of it's us. It's been serious learning, kind like, of, Yeah, it? like uh, making the action figures, for example, the way they come out of molds, how to get color into a single shade and so on. Uh, it's been like quick learning, but uh, we're very happy with the results. Yeah. Uh, everything we do also works independently. You don't need anything else to make one thing function. So we have the action figures, which are uh, like suitable for young audience as well as older collectors. Mm -hmm. The RPG scales from like real simple base controls to real deep systems. Like we have, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say our most active player base is probably like mid 20s or so, mm -hmm. uh, okay. although it scales down and up. And yeah, the card game, uh, the card game yeah, the card game is uh, like your uh, later teens and up is the primary market. But we have things like Interdex and so on suited for the crossover audience that come from action figures into the cards. Like they have something they can pick up as well. Mm. All right, well let's let's talk card game then. Yeah, sounds okay. Good. So uh, 
if you pass me your your intro pack there, yep. so how would you right? Say I was coming up to you on the stand yep. at an event. How would you pitch this to me as the punter walking about? That is the that's the version to play with your kids, isn't it? That is yep. the so, an intro to the game, but. Slightly simpler than you would get with a starter deck. Yeah. Okay. So the yeah. So the intro deck uh, contains uh, two decks ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, as I mentioned, been tuned to like either those new to card games or a younger audience, like mm -hmm. a parent buying for their eight-year-old child, perhaps. Okay. And uh, uh, well, okay, I'm just gonna yeah, go, yeah, for yeah, it. go mad. Uh, and uh, like they show the core of the game itself, not necessarily the orders within it. Uh, so it teaches you on the base mechanics, goes light on the complex interactions. And then the starter deck is where it then ages up. So based on your card game experience, if you have played any TCGs or anything like that before, you can go into starter decks. But if you are new to it, then intro decks is where to go. Okay. Well, this is well here. Hold that up in front of you on your camera, and explain to me what we're what we're seeing on okay. this. So bring it on in. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Come on, Danny. You. Well I'll, done. I'll be the I'll be the hand model. You can be the pointer. Uh, oh. oh no, you're ripping it. Quick. <laughs> okay. Oh. Right. So uh, see, there, oh, we oh, oh, there we go. There we go. That's better. There we go. All right. Yeah. So this is the playmat. Uh, it's not required. It makes it a bit easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have health counter on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have little cardboard figures in the in the decks, uh, mm -hmm. but we also have uh, metal coins that. Yeah. Ah, been, so this. You know, yep. So this is your health counter then to go onto the sheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, we also have uh, metal coins that people might have seen at events and so on that we also give out. Uh, but yeah. So health counter yep. thirty-five down to zero. Uh, we have space for buffs, which is a uh, the core mechanic really of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and we have then your deck, hero slots, and items, uh, which we we'll get into a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to like the buff area, especially. It's hard to just comment on without explaining what they do. Yeah. Well, uh, I have one of the decks opened up. Uh, I've opened up the the tax side because out of them all so far, these have been my personal. That's your deck, player. isn't it? That's that's your love, the uh, the tech deck. I, I've enjoyed the actual playstyle of them, but we we will go through each of the the different factions mm -hmm. from the game and talk through their playstyle. But so explain to me what we're seeing just as I quickly flick through here. So yep. who is this? So that's your hero card. Each deck contains one hero. Uh, they belong to one of the six orders. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's Tech, the orange one. Uh, each order has access to three elements. So in this case, we have Explosives, Mechanical, and Time. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have a potential passability, a passive effect on a build that they can trigger, mm -hmm. and a starting health value in the corner there. OK. Uh, so, so you have one of those that's active from the start. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who you're playing as. OK, so this is Maxilli. Uh, heal any hero for one. This cannot be increased by effect. So yep. any, I assume other cards will have different status yeah. effects. Yeah. All right. Now I'm seeing combos here. Are yes. these a, a key part of the game? Just yeah. So uh, so a deck is built out of thirty action cards and five combo cards. Okay. The combos are like the big effects. Mm -hmm. um, the action cards require an element to play. So Maxili here, for example, because he has got explosives, mechanical, and time, he can play cards that require explosives, mechanical, and time. Okay. And uh, each turn you have two actions, so you can play, play up to two cards or draw up to two cards, a mix of the two. Okay. Uh, but combos are a bit special in that you need to pay for them. Those are big moves where you spend yeah. cards from your hand to... So that's perform. a regular action card there. Yeah. You can see yeah. it's yeah. only so got so one the, symbol at the top. Yeah, so this is the bread and butter of the game, the action cards. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's so. a buff, uh, the one you just had there, the Unstable Defender. Here we've got attack cards. Mm -hmm. So some cards are one-off effects, like the attacks and defense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just quickly cycle through here. Yeah. Uh, so, so you're allowed way. up to three of any one action card within your deck, and I combo see. cards all have to be individual. So you have five combos, all individual, mm -hmm. and up to three of any action. I see. And then if I if I quickly switch across, if I can find one here, combo, 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 come here. So these these decks are all made so that they should that you can play them straight out of the box. Yes. Any of these ones, they obviously if you always any time you buy a storm. Versus tech intro pack, you'll always get the same cards in that deck. Yeah. Um, but there's also a booster pack in there as well, which is just there, that you Ooh. can uh, start to customize. Don't tell me to do that. <laughs> no, no, no more for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a buff card. So how do they yeah. affect you during the game? Right. So uh, actually, if we get a smooth buff up, the clunky one's a bit more niche. Okay. Uh, so, so let's go for the unstable defender back there. There we go. Ramparts. Ramparts. Yeah. So. Uh, the buffs, unlike attack and defend cards, attack and defense, when played, they resolve their effect and then go discard pile. Mm -hmm. uh, buff stays in play on the big board in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have these symbols in the corners that you see there, so like little rotation symbols. Yep. Uh, when they do, you always reference the top left corner. 
Okay. So in this case, uh, Rampart reduces damage received by rotation value. Mm -hmm. So in the first corner, that's by two. Yep. Uh, and every turn, Union Buff Face, they rotate one step. And now we have a new top left corner and reference oh, that instead. And, and then every turn, going. that keeps on happening until they get to an empty corner like that, mm -hmm. at which point they go away, I see. or when they get all the way around. I see, I see. And then the combo buffs, I would have to use a mixture of the cards from my hand to pay the symbols yeah, at the top so, then? So in the case of the, uh, the action cards, just require you to have access to that element. So mm -hmm. you have ramparts where you need to have mechanical in order to be able to play it. Mm -hmm. But for this combo, for example, you need to use two mechanical cards to pay for it. Uh -huh. So just having mechanical on your here is not enough. You need mm -hmm. to use two mechanical cards from your hand. Yes. They get shuffled back into your deck, and they can put the combo into play. I see. And then by doing that, I'm I'm using them from my hand, but I'm not losing You're them not from losing my draw. Them. Yeah. No, no, they go back into your deck. You mm -hmm. don't have to discard them or anything like that because. Some of those combo cards have quite high payment values. Some mm -hmm. of them cost three or four cards. Yes. Um, but you can use combos towards paying four combos. Mm -hmm. As long as they have that crossover between the symbols, you can use them towards the payment. Oh, I see, I see. So could I use a combo to pay for a combo? Yes. Yep. Yep. You could, it, some, it, you, you could get complete payment. Some mm -hmm. will allow you to completely pay for others. Mm -hmm. Others will just pay towards combos. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. I'm sure there's some crossover in those ones you've got there. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, we have, ah, now this card. Yes. Me. What is this card? So that is a tribute card. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's actually used within the physical card game itself. Uh, this currently ties into the digital RPG, uh, but will also tie into the uh, the digital card game mm -hmm. as we get that developed. Uh, but yeah, so this one, if you scan it, you will get a bonus of some sort in the game. Mm -hmm. And as other people scan the same card, that bonus builds higher and higher and higher. The more people that scan it, the bigger your bonus gets. The little dots you can see on the corner there that run ah, around the edge. So every single tribute it. card, those dots are in a slightly different place, which makes every tribute card individual. I They're see. also in the same. They also work in the same way as any on any of our playing cards. I so see. even if somebody else picks up another of the exact same hero, those dots won't be in the same spots. I see. So every card is individual. If you scan more than one of that card into your copy, it will know you've scanned more than one in. I see. That's. Yeah. That's actually very, very clever. Yeah, so the, uh, so the tribute cards are currently only used for the RPG, where they give you various bonuses, like more loot, more XP, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, in a digital card game, there will also grant you bonuses that I can't get into yet, but they are... That's the reveal yeah, there. That's a tease. They're, yeah, teasing they're, teasing not, they're not co completely set in stone, uh, mm -hmm. but they are definitely worth having. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there's, there's one little thing that comes in the starter deck, which I personally love. This. Yep. It is incredibly nerdy of me, <laughs> but I love the fact that you get actually a little carrying box that you can just fold and put to together. We have so many of them in the office, they are everywhere. You can build a wall of them. We have so many of them in the office. I, mean, I, yeah, I just hoard them for my own cards at home. <laughs> but the, the number of times I come to play a card game and I've played it, I've had fun with it. Oh, what do you mean I need to go buy a deck box? Yeah. Actually having one just in the pack, it lets you have the thing yep. be done with the, the actual packaging yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah and move on. So we get essentially double of this in the pack. Yep. And yes. of course, a booster pack each. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one booster pack in uh, so the... So one in booster pack, in pack and one in each You have topic. to fight for that one, basically. You play one <laughs> game, and whoever wins that game gets the booster pack. That's, That's actually an incredibly fair way to do That's it. That's how it works. Yeah. I'll maybe do that with uh, one of the lads in the <laughs> office later for a giggle. Yeah. Take it away from Az, you know that will really, uh, that will really wind him up. <laughs> oh no, come on. Az, Az is our, our resident card gamer. He was, he was big into his collection yep. of card games, so... This is, this is me kind of stepping into his home turf <laughs> right now. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best, but I don't know. I, I might get, get a bit of a smack in the face here. <laughs> you, can, you can take him. <laughs> oh, you believe in me. Oh, I believe in you. you. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've had a very, very quick look at the, the intro pack. It's a very cool idea to be yep. able to walk up and say, this is how you will get you and your, your little one in here. You can sit down and you can have some fun with them. Yep. But if you're aiming at, say, the, the older teams, mm -hmm. I assume the, the starter deck yes. you start so, at. Yeah, so anyone with experience in card games before, I mean, we've seen like eight-year-olds rocking up at event and just smash it. Really? Uh, like, yeah. Wow. There are some, some really gifted kids out there. Mm -hmm. I have uh, been beaten by a couple of eight-year-olds, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so these are for either experienced players or older players. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, where the intro decks kind of show you the real fundamentals of the game in a quite a simple way, it's more about attacking, defending, not so much about the buff into place. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where it kind of gets into more of the depth. I see, I see. Well, I'm, I'm guessing you guys probably had to do a ton of playtesting to figure out just what the composition of this deck versus these two yeah. decks should yeah. have been. Yeah. We, okay. we spent a, a full couple of yeah, days. Didn't you we sit, yeah, yeah, we sat there playing for a couple of days. Just it, a lot of it was me playing with an intro deck, whilst you 
battered me with a starter deck to well, make sure that I wasn't going to beat him too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so we yeah we did a lot of tests with Intrigue versus Intrigue, obviously, to mm. make sure they roughly balanced, and then yeah, trying yeah. out against all the starter decks and a bunch of homemade decks and so on. Mm. Just yeah, it's part of the balancing procedures, really. Mm. Well, th this is this leads me on to a question. Uh, so I want to quickly talk about the different styles of play for yep. each yep. of the orders, right? But I also want to have a, a little bit of a, a basically your initial idea of what makes a good starter pair. So say me and a buddy have came into the store. If say I'm going to go tech, which one should What's they a good grab with? Competition, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, let's actually start talking through some of them. So let's let's talk dread. All right. Oh, there we go. So dread here. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Is uh, probably one of the more advanced starter yep. decks. Yep. Uh, so it's also one of the most popular ones. Uh, so Dread plays uh, very heavily around, so the three elements mm -hmm. are Poison, Death, and Shadow. Okay. And uh, it's very heavy around buffs, so it's very buff-centric. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, trickle damage, the buffs that stack up and eventually overwhelm the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have much in terms of reliable healing. They leech health from their opponents, they deal damage and heal simultaneously. They might, they might need to work a bit harder to get healing back. They even have uh, healing abilities that heal them up, and then over the next few turns, if you don't get rid of that card, take it all back from you. Really? So, yeah, so you want to be able to, before you play that card, you really want to have a way of getting rid of that card. Yeah, That's so, an interesting yeah. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, so they focus on uh, suppressing the opponent, mm. uh, disabling their ways to fight back to you, mm -hmm. uh, poisoning you, and disabling you with shadow magic and so on, uh, while you're slowly. Yeah, they don't have a lot of spike damage yeah. in there, do they? Yeah, slowly suffocating you, basically. And I assume, is there much backstory to the world of Lightseekers? Uh, yes, yes, there is, which uh, we'll be exploring a lot more over the yep. next few months, really. Yeah, okay. Um, writing. Can, I, can I get a taster? For yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it takes place in the world of Tantos, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, as you might imagine, fantastical, magical place, mm -hmm. uh, where we have um, Dread is one of the five magical orders. Mm -hmm. Tech is kind of a uh, combination. We have the Tyrax, the wizard. Mm. Lizard look likes uh, that kind of invented tech to some extent. It uh, it comes from some ancient magics, but mm -hmm. they're combining magic and technology. Okay, but cool. the core five magical orders are uh, yeah, astral, dread, mountain, nature, and storm. Okay, uh, and all the creatures across Tantos utilize these magic in different ways. They tend to align themselves with certain orders. Mm -hmm. So dread, for example, uh, the Noxin, uh, the Noxin race, which yeah. features a lot in this, uh, are the dread specialists. Some kind of uh, badass rogue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the, yeah, yeah, the necromancers, kind of... shadow assassins, and yeah. uh, shamans, and okay. if you like your kind of anti-hero characters, I'm then, then dread is uh, is the way to go. Kind of yeah, they're kind, of, they're, they're kind of like they are mostly good guys, but debatably so. Yeah. They're is it is it a matter of perspective? Yes, it definitely yeah. is a matter of perspective. Uh, they yeah. are uh, they are quite they're proud, powerful race. They mm -hmm. it's kind of knocks in first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody uh, else yeah, is yeah. number two. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so they are yeah, uh, live over in Dreadmire, beyond the steadfast peaks. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, shall we move on to our next? Indeed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so next up, okay, Storm. There you go, Storm. Oh, blue deck. So what exactly will this deck be getting up to in the game? Yeah. So Storm is uh, quite a combo-focused uh, order. So they have a lot of ways to make, so those five combo cards you have, they have a lot of ways to get more out of those. Mm -hmm. Make them cheaper to play, increase the power of them, return them back to your hand again, uh, So they uh, or trigger other effects by playing combos. I think a lot of people underestimate how hard they can hit, mm -hmm. because the Mari, who are the characters, for the most part, that are aligned with Storm, mm -hmm. are kind of cutesy-looking little sea creatures. Okay. But, yeah, um, so it, it but kinda, they hit hard. Yeah, yeah so it kind of takes on the role of, uh, it's like, uh, some comical angles as well in here. So the the Maori are very fun-loving, whimsical, impulsive race. Uh, they live for the now. They they love to just have fun. Uh, now that fun come often comes through the storm magic, okay. uh, lightning bolts and water spells and hurricanes. But so <laughs> I could be walking along the beach. Oh, hello, cute little one. Oh, why is it biting me? Why is it biting me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So. Um, so a lot of weird creatures in the storm. There yeah. are suspicious squid and impressed sludge fins and whatever. Bubble else. fish. Uh, everyone yeah, loves the bubble everyone fish. Everyone loves the bubble yeah. fish. I, I will say I, I have had a look through some of the, the artwork that you have in the yeah. cards and it's it's cartoony, but it, it still feels yeah. so bright, so happy. Yes. Then you look at Dread and it's it's a little bit heavier, you <laughs> yeah, know, the style yeah, yeah. change. Do you guys work with many artists to actually create all of them? Yeah, so for the so for this first set we've got uh, we have three artists, Anna, Tom and Tom, mm -hmm. uh, that are Basically producing the briefs and some of the like sketches and outlines for every single card. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first set, we've worked with a number of outsourcing studios, so a lot of different artists contributing through 
mm. uh, through studios. Um, and going forward, like set two onwards, it's more in-house creation and mm -hmm. fewer outsourcing artists. I see. Yeah. Set uh, so two is already talking about it now. You've not even got through set one. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? set two. But, uh, but yeah, and, so, and, and suddenly yeah, so, the addiction it begins. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so like those guys are doing an amazing job. Like, yeah. Because we get a lot of compliments on the art for this, mm -hmm. and I just can't wait to show the future yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, wave two and wave three. Even, like, it's, yeah, looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, well, th yeah. this is the, the thing. Whenever you see you guys at an event, you guys do the, the big stand with all of the artwork done huge on banners yeah, and stuff, and it drags you right in. Yeah, it's kind of, it's been, it's been a bit of a learning curve for us. Like the first big one we did in the UK was, uh, was UK Games Expo oh, last yeah. year. And um, we got on that last minute. We pretty much um, we wanted to go. We were quite late getting, you know, to the, quite late to the party. Thought we'd missed out. Yeah. And then about two, three weeks before the event, uh, yeah. a space freed up. Uh -huh. So um, we jumped on that one. We had quite a small stand there, mm -hmm. but this year we're already we're already set up you're, for you're it. We've got we've got a, we've got a nice big stand this year. Lots of play nice, space nice. for people. Last year it was a bit crammed, but this year there'll be lots. Yes, yeah, so we're doing a lot more with tournament spaces now. We've mm -hmm. been to a variety of. Uh, so we've been to just Pack South now. Mm -hmm. Was it a week or two ago? Yep. Just uh, back from there last weekend. Yeah, Pack <laughs> Unplugged before then, where we have a lot more uh, a tournament space and so on. So yeah. Well, uh, there's a question then. No, it's a little off topic, just for yeah. a moment. But having been to a couple of events now, what is your thinking that makes a great event for people to go to? From our personally, personally, I never get to see as much of the event as I'd like. So, <laughs> take a pack, pack South, for example, it looks really good yeah. from what I could see from the door to our booth, <laughs> our booth to the toilet, <laughs> and then back to the door again. And the lunch. Exactly. Oh, well, sometimes, no, you know, but sometimes no, so people have to go and do that for us. Yeah, so usually people bring us lunch while we're still yeah, sitting there yeah, playing yeah. the game. But okay. we, yeah. I mean, everybody at the studio loves going to the events mm. because. When you're when you're at the studio all the time working on these things, like you can, you know, we're playing. We're like, oh, is this good? We think this is. We quite enjoy playing this, mm -hmm. um, but you kind of get lost in the haze. Uh -huh. Then when you actually go to the, the, the best thing, like my favourite thing by far, going to the events is actually sitting down and playing with people. Yeah, yeah. And for for a lot of people, it's the first time when you show them how a buff works and you show them the rotation. They're like, ah. Yeah. You show them the. You, they realise the, the prism the they can do. Yeah. yeah, you show them the prison cannon in mountain and how wait a couple of turns and that hits them for a massive eight damage and all of a sudden they're like, ow. They oh, combine the colossi. Yeah. Exactly. Colossi yeah. 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 So those are the best bits actually getting out there, meeting mm. people and just yeah, like, yeah, seeing it's how excited a, they get. It's the amount of people that kind of show up on day one, mm. and yeah, never, heard of the, yeah. never heard of the game before, yeah. and like midnight they're still there. Next yeah. day they're on to midnight again and they just live in the booth. Like the amount of people that do that, it's. It's what, so people it's, just camp out. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's 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 a great thing. It's so humbling as well. Like just these people just show up, have no idea what it is, and they just live there. Well, it's, we had it's great. At Pax Unplugged, we had somebody who I think Bova Bova just started playing that weekend. Yeah. Um, who a guy goes by the name Bova just started playing on the Friday. Came along, checked out the game. We gave him some demos. Picked up a starter deck. Started playing. Was there most of the day. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of Saturday. Then Sunday, I entered our tournament, won a thousand dollars in the uh, in the tournament, and a trip what? to Pax South to come and enter last weekend in the uh, yeah in the championship there as well. So, um, and that what? was somebody who had just started that weekend. What we what I'm saying to you is you should enter the tournament next, <laughs> uh, the next Pax, or uh, in the UK. Uh, well, we we will of course be at UK Games Expo yep. this year, so we will have to stuff off with you guys, you know, see if things are moving forward. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so that'll be the one year anniversary for us in the public space, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, before then, because we had like last UK Games Expo, was quite a small event, but we were. Mm. I mean, I was terrified of going there because yeah. until then, um, we didn't realize just how how big the card game would get. Yeah. It yeah. was kind the of stand was rammed. Yeah. I mean, it, like, to be honest, it was initially just thought of as a thing to go alongside the RPG, but it's yeah, really yeah, become yeah. a thing of its own now. And until then, we didn't realize this really, because mm. it was like me and Chris, the other designer, mm. we mostly uh, we designed and balanced all the deck cards ourselves, basically, mm. with some input from guys in the office jumped in every now and then. Mm. But on that, it's like there, there are really like two of us have really played this game. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone else in the world likes it. <laughs> yeah. And you see, th this is something that's that I find beautiful about our industry. You've created something thinking, okay, this will this will be something nice, light, and fun to go along with this this beautiful yeah. thing that we're creating as well. And then all of a sudden people look at it and go, <laughs> yeah. And then just the levels of, of want and the desire to jump in and actually explore the world, the, the actual yeah. meta of the game. 
it's one thing that's really incredible to see is just whenever people jump in on a thing that you weren't really expecting it. And it's, I mean, like, I've seen that happen many a time. Every time I hear people are just humbled and amazed and thankful. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's just yeah. so cool. Yeah, to no, see. it's amazing. Yeah. All right, next faction. <laughs> yep. Tech. Here you go. There you go. Should we just let you explain tech? <laughs> No, because I might have got it completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, so tech is uh, the uh, uh, the Tyrex focus order. So mm -hmm. set one, most of you'll see in here will be Tyrex. Uh, mm -hmm. The it uh, consists of the elements explosives, mechanical, and time. So as mentioned, lore-wise, tech is not actually one of the orders. Yes, it is a composition of everything else. Like mm -hmm. it's the way that the Tyrex use magic to fuel their technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so the way that plays is uh, obviously time mm -hmm. is a way to uh, ex yeah rewind and fast forward time of the game. So you can uh, so you have cards that let you move buffs backwards. You can rotate through those corners or mm -hmm. fast forward them, uh, return buffs back into hand again, or mm -hmm. change the order of time and swap cards in and out of, out mm -hmm. of play. So it's a lot of board control going to take. Mm -hmm. They also have like the Tarks are known for making these ambitious, crazy They're inventions. They're kind of mad inventors, like, aren't they? Nuclear power plants, just powering wow. toasters. Yes. Uh, like everything is completely overboard with them. They just, mm. they, any excuse they can think of, they just make a machine to do it. Uh, like so we need to move this boulder. Let's make a mech to move it for us. <laughs> let's not use the that rod over there. <laughs> yeah. Levers. Yeah, um, the, the, that one stick is not enough. I need exactly. five sticks connected in about several different ways. And uh, yeah. here we go. And I don't pull it myself. A robot needs to pull exactly. it. <laughs> and a lot of that leads to danger for themselves, doesn't it? Yeah, so, the yeah. so explosives, there's a lot of self-damage in there. There's a lot of ways that you can lose stuff yourself, mm -hmm. whether it's health or cards. Mm -hmm. Very big in hits. Order, yeah, in order but, to get bigger yes. hits and bigger payouts. Yes, the one thing I've noticed for this deck, for the couple of games I've played is, some decks have uh, timing issues where you have to be playing very, very quickly in sequence mm -hmm. to actually get things to tick <clears> off in the correct order. Yeah. This deck has a couple of mitigations for that that let you reset your timing and actually bring things into line a little better to do bigger hits. Yep. Yep. And then actually having nice big damage spikes yep. and a decent number of heals mixed in there as yep. well to actually keep you running even though you're running quite exposed. Yeah. Well, they yep. can line up things that other orders mm. might not be able to line up because mm. of the fact that they can do that wind back, wind forwards. Yes. They can get some buffs in sync with each other like maybe a combo in sync with a increase in damage that mm -hmm. another order might not be able to yes. because of the order that you can play those cards. Mm -hmm. Which, again, it's another depth and another level yep. to the game yep. that I really hope people are going to start exploring as they play more and more into it. I mean, like, I'm novice at the moment, mm -hmm. but I'm instantly seeing mechanics within the game that I just I want to tweak and play with with some of the cards yep. that I've seen just to see if I can, I can pull off some nasty tricks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, tech is obviously my favorite. I love the idea of having big robot dinosaurs <laughs> just running around and that is the messing that things up for everybody. OK, next up we have nature. Yep. So uh, I assume this is going to be quite the, the peaceful, you know, you know uh, nothing bad of, ever happens. Well, there are a lot of big beasts in here. Yeah. Oh, then and, uh, not so peaceful. <laughs> Mantix, the reaving insectoids. You were uh, destroying me with those Mantix this morning. I tell you, we played a game this morning. He was absolutely <laughs> destroying me with them. Yeah, but yeah so uh, nature is Similar to Dread in a few ways, they mm -hmm. both uh, build a lot of buffs. Mm -hmm. uh, they they prefer the the long game, like building a big board that really then starts dominating the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that nature goes about it is that there's a lot more tending to your buffs. So in the way you might tend to a garden or a forest, uh, there's a lot of uh, ways to restart your your buffs once in play or um, returning them from the discard pile as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, they have ways to like. The way you play nature is that you want to take care of the stuff you put into play. It's not like with Dread, where it's a bit more fire and forget. Uh, like you just put in your poisonous creatures, and when they sit there, take damage over time, over time, over time. Nature is more about how do I make this sync up right and make them get more out of every mm. single card. That's so it's a, it's, a, it's a bit more intricate buff play. There. Yeah, it sounds like a, a nice deep like uh, strategy. If you have a player who who likes taking their time figuring out just the order of their attacks very very well, mm -hmm. this yeah. would be a good one for them. There's also a lot of um, uh, like uh, I don't want to say leeching mechanics, but like symbiosis mechanics where they benefit from what the opponent's doing. So the last card the opponent played, uh, what elements the opponent has access to, mm -hmm. uh, how many cards they have in their hand, things yeah. like that. So the, they also benefit from the state of the opponent. Mm -hmm. So true. so no, so playing against nature, you want to be wary of. I'm putting out too many buffs. Can they do something 
oh. worse because I'm doing so, or I'm holding all the cards right now. I see. You're still holding that against me from this morning, aren't you? <laughs> that was, you're, you're just dwelling on that one. I love this because I know you two guys just go hammer and tongs at each other oh, yeah. on camera, which <laughs> yep. is. It's a great way to test the game and actually figure out, okay, this is good. You found us perched on a little corner of a desk this morning, didn't you, playing it yeah, when, I you, came when you came in, in earlier? And you were playing like a two foot area? <laughs> yeah, just a tiny little space, putting them out. It's because if you beat Benny in a game, yeah. you can't stop playing against him until he's beating you at least double back. Really? Because otherwise, so, there's something I mean, in him that won't let him stop. Triple back this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Triple back this morning. Yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah. I did, oh, I I did win it. game one. Because the other night I beat him three games in a row, and oh, I, I thought his head was going to pop. So. All right, well, then you owe him three more. No, three he, more he, he's kicked my butt since then multiple <laughs> times. Like, I'm going to hold on to those three wins. Okay. All right. Uh, next faction, Astral. Okay. Yep, yep. This. This deck, how does that play? What's what's one of the key All right, features? Right, so this is uh, this is one more unique one, gotta say. Uh, so astral uh, consists of solar, lunar, and gravity, mm -hmm. and uh, the Yakona plays a big part in astral. Uh, obviously, more creatures as well, but mm -hmm. uh, in set one, the kind of the, the forerunners here. Mm -hmm. uh, they they're all about the the past and the future, like reading signs in the stars and mm -hmm. uh, let the history guide you and so on. Mm -hmm. So. The last cards played and next cards coming up are both very important to them. Mm. So they have a lot of cards that benefit uh, with bonuses and so on based on the last things you discarded. Mm -hmm. So for example, there are solar cards that will get more damage if the last discarded card is a lunar card. Mm -hmm. And you want to therefore chain cards in different ways to get the most out of them. And also the other cards that draw the top card from your deck and mm. based on what you draw, you might get different benefits. Oh, yeah, I've got that slightly random element from that. Yes. It's the one, they're always the deck where you go and where it's like, this card's going to do two damage to you. If I draw another one that's gravity, it's going to hit you for four. Or not gravity. Well, so not gravity, it's going to hit you for four. Can I do it? Can I do it? You know, it'll be, you'll be down to like one health left. Guarantee it will come up and it'll be the, <laughs> it won't do it for you. So is this sort of more of a, a gambler's deck where you'll uh, push your no, luck so, on certain things? So the drawing the top card uh, has obviously a bit of random element to it. There are some cards in here that let you alleviate some of those potential risks. Mm -hmm. uh, playing to the last discarded card is all under your control. It's up to you to make sure that you play the cards in the optimum mm. sequence to get the most out of them. Oh, I see. Uh, you have some cards to help get around that. For example, there's a card, it's a temporary buff, so four corners, and while that's in play, your top card counts as any element in the game. Okay. So that you complete it for a short period of time, claim all the bonuses regardless of the order you play the cards in. Oh, I see. And you have a card like, say, Zeppelin Scout, which mm. lets you look at your top card, rearrange them as you want, and put them back again. So then you know what the next card's going to be when you play these cards. It's very strategic. Yeah, it's a different style. Of, it's quite a different style of play to a lot of the other orders. Mm. Okay, last one uh, yeah. is Mountain, I believe. Yep, it is. Okay, so... This is a Mountain. lot of the deck people go for from the start, from the off, isn't it? For, yeah, uh, so Mountain, uh, the start deck Mountain is kind of set up to be a bit of a jack of all trades. So mm -hmm. they have Fire, Earth and Crystal. Uh, so that's the starter deck specifically mm -hmm. is uh, kind of showcasing a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're undecided, Mountain is a good starting point. I see. Uh, as you get deeper into Mountain, they have a lot of ways to deal with combo threats. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they're quite... Uh, the bad dealing with say, trickle damage from like Dread and Nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to like these single big spikes, they, they're pretty good at recovering from those and mitigating them mm -hmm. with temporary protection. Um, but yeah, they also have ways to punish people playing combos or mitigate... I see. The effects of combos. I see. Um, okay. Uh, and in the actual backstory, what are the, the race behind these? Uh, the Everrock. Yeah, Eberrock. so the Everrock. Uh, so primarily, we have the Everrock. Um, you'll see in, through all the creatures that you see on the cards, there are lots of, lots of races tying into all the elements, all the orders. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the forerunners as the, the heroes in mm -hmm. set one are the Everrock. Uh, they are an ancient race uh, from Stedfoss Peaks in mm -hmm. northern and uh, like northern central Tantos. Yeah. Well, um, I'll tell you what, I'll open this up and we can yeah. actually have a look at yeah. some of them. Yeah. yeah, so they're giant, giant rock men who... Uh... Yeah, so, yeah, so these guys, so the Everrock, uh, one of the main things about them, like the real cool thing is that they are born big. So they okay. are born out of... Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what the place is called now. This has a a name, but yeah, the, the chambers within Stephas Peaks where they're born is one of the magical hotspots. They are one of the oldest races on Tantos. Uh, they are, they live forever unless defeated. Mm -hmm. And they all have, like, they're made out of stone, but they have intricate carvings in them. And the way that they basically gain intelligence, or skills at all, is mm -hmm. to carve this into them. So it's almost like a magical programming language, yeah. almost. So they carve... Uh, magical different, tattoos. Yeah, different yeah, symbols carving. on... Grant them skills. Like, I see. But if they, say, receive a, uh, 
a wound in combat that might completely cut out a part oh. of their anatomy or give them a new skill if they're really lucky. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, the older they get, because they recarve themselves to grant new skills or fine tune the skills, they get smaller and smaller and smaller over time. Oh. So quite often the the oldest and wisest are those of the smallest because they just chip away at themselves. Like a little pebble. <laughs> <laughs> this is our elder. He is two so, inches tall. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so in the pack, because this is a starter deck, there's one or two differences. So you do get your play mat, yep. your deck box, yep. your standee to mark your health. Yep. You then get a booster pack and this. What is this? Yeah, so that is a trading shield. So if you want to show off a card, but you worry about uh, you worry someone about else being scanning. Scanned. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so that is there to hide the dots around the sides. So if you want to show ah. off a card on camera, you can slide it in there, and that will just cover up the dots. Basically, all your cards you've been showing off to this camera up until now, any eagle-eyed viewer at home could definitely be claiming those from you. <laughs> so if you get on this one first, you can make those cards yours, so Justin can't have them. So oh. if you're the first person to watch this video, do that, and then he'll be uh, damning you later on. So if right. you put your hero in there and then show it to the camera, I see it. Now, I, I no one difference. will be able to claim it from you. No one's going to take your Dodo the Mighty. That's yours. I see. And I do see the, the rock features on them. Yep. them. It's yep. very, very cool. Although, what's his ability here? Take two damage, draw two cards. That's actually not bad. That's a, yeah. that's a, that is a good ability. It yeah. is a very useful ability. Yeah. We then get this heavier fold out piece, which I assume is the full rules. That's yep. the rules, yep. You've got the quick rules on the quick start rules on one side and the full rules on yep. the back. Yep. yep. So, uh, as with most of these things, it will fold out quite a bit. Yeah. It, yeah. So we also have the full rules on our website, so lightseekers.cards. Yep. Uh, that contains the full rules with some clarification additions in there to mm -hmm. explain some bits that uh, that have been the most common questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so latest info is always on the website. We also have a card wiki on lightseekers.cards, which has an FAQ about every single card in the game. So mm -hmm. I've I basically written up every question I could think of, from the mm -hmm. most basic questions, how do I pay for a combo, mm -hmm. to the most advanced, how does it how does this interact with cards A, B, and C? I see. Should be in there. Uh, I might look for them. Try yeah. and catch Benny so, out. See if you can <laughs> find uh, one that isn't so, on there. Yeah, so it's, if you have any questions about any cards, the card wiki on lightseekers.cards is mm. the first place to check out. It should hopefully answer 99% of all the questions. Cool, cool. All right, final question from me then. Yeah. So, mountains open. Yeah. Uh, I can probably guess Az will probably want to play that. He does seem to have a bit of a thing for it, doesn't he? Who? What? What of the other factions would you or orders would you put against it? Uh, so the the most fun matchups in the starter deck. So see, I I really like playing Astral versus Mountain. Astral versus Mountain. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just uh, if I can close a box would be handy. <laughs> it defies me. Uh, so that would be so if I, you're looking for it on the shelves, these two, yeah. So yeah. I I like those two. I like that matchup. Uh, uh, Astral versus Nature. Oh, uh, sorry, Mountain is also quite fun against Nature. I mean. There are nuances with each each matchup. Yes. Um, so, so those would be your two recommendations against mine. Yeah. So astral or nature are, are probably the. So there are some there are some cards interacting in interesting ways between them. Uh, okay. And specifically for those who've seen the cards, we know in nature have insect swarm versus mountain fort. Mountain fort is a damage reduction card. Mm. Uh, it's a variant on those rotating buffs we saw before, but they have clunky corners. Mm -hmm. A buff with clunky corners only rotate when the effect triggers. Uh -huh. So they have a damage reduction card that basically sits and waits until they take damage, and only then does it rotate. So what I'd be better trying to do minimal damage to that to yeah. force it to rotate. And uh, nature have a card that's... called Insect Swarm, which yes yeah. stays indefinitely and does one damage every single time forever. I see. So, so that will so just that's a really it, quick way to get rid of just that. Chip number. away at my yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who would you face off against the tech? Just uh, for curiosity. So tech uh, and uh, uh, tech and storm are quite a, a fun matchup because of the. Hence the intro pack. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> uh, now, I have, I mean, I must admit that I've played some of these against so many others that I also really like Tekken Mountain. Really? <laughs> uh, like, it's, uh, it's a one I So, put... pretty much everything works with everything. It should, they should all work against each other. You shouldn't yeah. find any one order that okay. is massively yeah. outweighed. But, there, but there, are some, there are some matchups that, because the cards in the Interdex play particularly well with each mm -hmm. other. Mm. Uh, so, Tekken and Storm, I think, are a lot of fun because. Mm. Uh, while well, Storm has like Storm has these big combos that have ways to do big spikes. Yeah. Uh, because it takes a bit to twist buffs backwards and forwards, they have a lot of fun ways to mess with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, lastly, then yeah, uh, you've got yeah, Dread and Astral. Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I was also uh, Dread. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I put if I had to pick one order to go with Dread, then Dread and Nature are both fun because they're both about big board control, lots of buffs. Okay. Um, 
Well, uh, then one last thing then, just uh, thought of. What's your order? What's your order? Oh, um, I think I, I tend to jump between Astral and Dread. Okay. Um, I'll say Astral. Okay, and Benny, all of them? Uh, I mean, the I, there, are, there are some, there are some particular decks that I, I prefer with certain styles of play I prefer with different orders. Like, mm. I've been playing a lot of Storm recently, mm -hmm. but if I have to fall back to one, it tends to be Dread because okay. of the. But you know what the best way to play is? To mix them together. So you can have some cards from one order in with cards from another order. Well, there, there's a question. <laughs> How many ways are there to play? So obviously you have your starter decks. Yep. You have your expansions beyond your starter decks. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, so we have uh, yeah, so each order. Uh, so the first set, set one, has about 380 cards. Mm -hmm. um, and these will come from booster packs, yeah? Yeah, booster packs, packs yeah. And, and the decks, obviously. Okay. Uh, we have unaligned cards, which can, which can be played by anyone. And we have items, which are... So items typically have an element, but they don't require the element. They give you the element. Ah, so okay. if you play as Dread, for example, and equip a fire weapon, you can now play fire cards in Dread. Mm -hmm. And some of the combos require... So there is a combo for every combination of, of order, mm -hmm. uh, and they require a card from each order to, to be played. Oh, so there's dual color? Yeah, yeah so cross-order combos. So mm -hmm. for example, if you have Dread with the Fire Weapon, you can play Apocalypse, mm -hmm. which is a devastating damage over time combo. They're all two-cost combos. I yeah, see. so you need one, one Dread card, one Mountain card to play this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have Tech and Nature's Life Imbue, uh, Storm and Astra, Tsunami, mm -hmm. and so on. So all of the uh, combination of order have their own special yeah. cross-order combo. And you can equip two items, so you could have a deck made up of effectively three different colors of cards. Cool. Well, so you or can if go you include the unaligned. And that's when you get some like really interesting effect. Like mm -hmm. Dread, for example, doesn't have any real big spike cards on their own, mm -hmm. uh, unless you really big up a big, build up a big board first. Mm -hmm. But they have some cards that really benefit from that. For example, a card called Mimicking Horror, which is always my go-to example for cross-order decks. Mm -hmm. Mimicking Horror is a card that lets you trigger the effect of a buff in play. So mm -hmm. Any buff you have in play, you can trigger that effect. Oh. So it might have been buff you had to wait four turns to get into play, but then Mimicking Horror can make that happen straight away again. I see. Clever. Uh, so Clever. if you have, so if you're playing something like Tech, mm -hmm. which have some, they have Colossal Cannon, which does damage to you up front, and then hits mm -hmm. for 11, like really big spikes, if you bring in a Shadow Weapon and, ta uh, oh. and tag in a Mimicking Horror, you yeah. can trigger that 11 one more time. I see. I see. And there's, there's no real restriction on that. It's just working out your percentages of what's going to come out through the deck. Yeah. Certain yeah. cards help you get items out. So obviously, you don't want to draw the the other order's card before the item to get to, yeah. to yeah. play them. Uh, but you have a card, Tantosian Blacksmith, which is one of the most, or if not the most popular card in the game, mm -hmm. uh, which lets you search for an item and equip it from your deck straight I away. I see. Right. Uh, any other play modes? Uh, I mean, there are, there are a lot of different play styles. There are some that, at least through the tournament play we've seen, maybe in private, but mm -hmm. through all the tournaments I've seen, there are at least two types of deck I have never seen yet. So I'm okay. curious to see when yeah. people figure those out. We're okay. also starting to get draft games out there quite Ooh. a lot as well. So okay. draft's been really popular, hasn't it, at events? Yep. So. Uh, now, are there any major changes you need for draft? Because this is so color-centric. It does yeah. become a bit of a rainbow when yeah. you... Uh... Yeah, so the draft rules are quite different. I, uh, I mean, uh, we're going to do some videos about that later. Uh, to oh, go into, okay. To go into details. Yeah, we, you, you've been told we are going to do some videos about that. Okay, that, that, that's me told. I'm in. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. told. I'm in. Uh, so I, I I'm not, don't want to go into too much detail right now to just confuse it all. Mm -hmm. But in draft, you have access to all colors, mm -hmm. and you can wield two heroes. So you're not okay. no longer bound to one. Okay. Uh, and you're not restricted by the combo alignments or anything like that. So you mm -hmm. can have more than five combos, and drafts gets can get really crazy. You can have 10, okay. 15 yeah. combos in there if you want to. You can always <laughs> they always on risks and not being able to play those combos. Yeah, I can kind of guess that. <laughs> yeah. um, See, I don't know, because one of the things I've seen is, you know, the timing stuff that I'm talking about, yeah. and then having buffs that are actually increasing some attack stuff. So if, if we do draft, yeah. I'll maybe have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a good way to really ramp up your damage. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so uh, guys, thank you very much for coming in. Everybody out there, get your comments in below. Are you curious about Lightseekers? Uh, oh, actually, I'll tell you what. How about we do a competition if you guys are up for it? Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Sounds All like right. a plan. Uh, we'll be good. How about a two-player starter bundle of some sort? Yeah, we could probably do if. How about a couple of starter decks? Okay. Uh, of people. Boosters. Uh, yeah, a couple of starter decks of people's choice, whatever okay. couple they want, and then a couple of our super booster boxes. Yeah. Which yeah, is... so, yeah. Super boosters. Go okay. So they uh, super booster contains five booster packs. Mm -hmm. uh, so a starter deck and uh, or oh, a couple of starter decks, a couple of super boosters. That will yeah. give you. That should hopefully. To, you know, that would give you effectively 12 booster packs between you, so that should be well on the way to being able to start 
customizing those okay. starter decks up. Okay, so well, everybody, get your comments in if you want to win a Lightseekers two-player starter set, including two starter decks, obviously, of the order of your choice, and two Super Booster Packs to actually get you started collecting. We'll move on. We'll see you again soon.